So I've had the Alienware X16 in the studio for quite some time now, but with all the other laptops that we've had in that we've had to review and play with, this one hasn't received the love that I think it deserves. Now, annoyingly, the RAM was soldered on, but the SSDs are still upgradable. So in tonight's video, I'm gonna see if I can max it out with eight terabytes of fast Gen 4 SSDs. Now these drives are double-sided and that's the problem you find with most laptops not being able to fit them. But having a quick look inside this laptop, it looks like there's more space than your average laptop. So I'm hoping both of these are gonna fit without any problems at all. So in order to actually upgrade this laptop itself, we're gonna need a few tools. Obviously, you need your SSDs themselves. I will put a link in the description below if you wanna pick the same drives up. You're gonna want a toolkit. I'm using the iFixit Electronics Essentials. It's a well-priced driver set that has all the actual tools I need on my day-to-day -day laptop and handheld maintenance. Now you can buy much more expensive iFixit kits or other kits, but in all honesty, this one has pretty much everything that you're gonna need. Now we're gonna clone the original drive to one of the SSDs. Now you can either do that by installing one of these SSDs next to the original and cloning it on the actual machine itself, or the easier way, but slightly more costly, is to get yourself an external caddy so that you can actually clone the drive externally and then actually put both these SSDs in rather than having to open the laptop up twice. Now you could do a fresh Windows install, it's relatively straightforward and all of Dell's drivers are on their website, but I'm gonna take the easy route Western Digital offer free cloning software. If you go to their website and put in the actual drive that you've got, I will link the actual cloning software to this drive in the description down below as well to make it nice and easy for you to find that software. But once we've downloaded the cloning software, install it on your X16. We're gonna put the drive in the caddy. Now the good thing about this Sabrin one that I'm actually linking down below is it's toolless. So we just open the drive up and we can see straight away our M.2 connector to an 80 mil at the end. We're gonna take our four terabyte SN850X, which is one of the highest performing four terabyte drives you can buy. Now you notice that there are chips on the back, so it won't fit in every laptop. I'm hoping we have no problems here. So now we take that, put, slide it into the actual caddy itself. Just turn the lever to lock it in place. Push it closed and it clips in place. It's then just a case of popping in our USB-C connector into the back of the laptop and we're ready to clone. So now that we've plugged in the SN850X in external caddy, we're gonna open the Acronis software, accept the license agreement if you haven't already used it. As the program opens, click on the tool section in the left-hand pane and then choose the clone disk option. From there, we're gonna keep the automatic mode selected, click next. We're gonna choose our source disk, which is the original SSD. You can see here I've got my 500 gigabyte you click next again, it takes a second or two to then read through that. We're now choosing our destination disk, which is our new SN850X. We click OK, we click next, and agree to the message, and it's now gonna then prepare it to actually clone. We leave the to replace a disk on this machine selected, because obviously we're replacing it. Check everything's okay, and hit proceed. From there, it's just gonna copy all the files from your existing SSD over to your new four terabyte SN850X. So once you shut the machine down and install the drive, everything will be exactly where you left off. So now that the drive is cloned, we're gonna shut down this machine. So make sure you don't put it in sleep, make sure you fully shut it down, unplug the caddy, unplug your power, and then we need to take the base plate off the bottom of this laptop. Now I like to put a mouse mat on my table so I can turn my laptop onto the mouse mat and stop it getting scratched or damaged, but I'll leave that up to you. So once I've got this machine upside down, I'm gonna remove the six Phillips head screws. And bearing in mind when you're opening the X16, the front left and right screw, as you're undoing them, it pops that base plate away from the laptop to give you a little area to pry it away. So once you've undone all of your screws, you can then put your thumb into either corner and pry the base plate off. It comes off nice and simply, giving you full access to your SSDs. Now before we start installing the SSDs, I want to just first quickly disconnect the battery so we don't do any harm to the computer. So there's a pry tool in your iFixit kit. If not, hopefully you've got one. But there's also a pull tab at the back of the battery connector. Just be very, very careful. Make sure you pull in the middle of the tab and use your pry tool if you need to, just to free up that connector. Don't yank on it. You don't want to damage that cable. Once your battery is disconnected, we're going to start by removing the heatsink. Now you can see the drive that's populated. 
you're going to unscrew that screw first, remove the heat sink, and then pull out very carefully the original drive. Now take the SN850X that you've cloned the Windows drive to, and then we're going to then slide that back into the slot with the drive you've just removed. Put the heat sink back onto the drive. You definitely need heat sinks on these hot running Gen 4 drives, and screw it back into place. Now when we remove the screw for the next heat sink and pull it away, obviously there's no SSD in there. We have to be careful because if it's like mine, they've actually got all the actual pads stuck to the heat sink. You're going to remove that bit of plastic, remove the thick square thermal pad and stick it into the actual connector's motherboard area as shown by the diagram and as I'm doing here. That just stops the SSD touching onto the motherboard. So even if you have double sided SSDs like these SN850X, there's no chance you're going to touch the motherboard and short it. Now, once we've done that, we're going to get the heat sink, place it onto the top like we did for the first drive, screw it down, and that is both your SSDs installed. Now, once they're both installed and you're happy, plug the battery back in, slide the actual base plate back on and screw it on carefully, and you're actually done. Now, once you plug the actual laptop back into place and power it back on, it sometimes does take a few seconds to boot up initially because you have unplugged your battery. And when it does so, it will tell you your clock is out again because you've unplugged your battery. So just say OK to that, boot through to Windows, and you're up and running. Now, if you open Explorer, you'll notice you've only got your four terabyte drive showing, which is your OS, because your second drive, if it's new, will not have been initialized. So we will right click on the Windows flag and choose Disk Management. And when you click on that, it will automatically pop up and tell you there's another drive in this system and it needs initializing. Follow the prompts all the way through, then right click the black area where the SSD is and select Format Drive. Follow the prompts through, name the drive to whatever you would like to call it. I'm calling mine Games Drive because this is where I'm going to store all the games. And then click OK, that'll be formatted and ready for use. As we go back into Explorer, you can now see we have our two 4 terabyte drives showing. So 8 terabytes of fast Gen 4 SSD. And just to show you how fast these drives are, I ran Crystal Disk Mark on the C drive, which is obviously in use, so obviously the, the worst case scenario. And I got just under 7,000 read and six and a half thousand writes, so an incredible score, and much faster than the SSDs that Dell provide. And with the way the SSDs have dropped in price recently, there's really no excuse at the moment to totally fill up your system. And obviously, with the size of games these days, it comes in so handy. Now, if you've got any questions, pop it in the comment section down below, and I will get back to you. And as always, thank you for watching.